Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist, and back there is Cindy Oliver, and she's a dog. This is another video in my series on logical fallacies, and I must say that I had a plethora of material for this one. In this video, we will be covering the ad hominem fallacy. Ad hominem is Latin for to the man. And this fallacy occurs when instead of addressing someone's argument or position, you irrelevantly attack the person or some aspect of the person who is making the argument. Now, a lot of people using the ad hominem fallacy think they are being original, but it turns out they are not. In fact, the ad hominem fallacy was first documented by the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle, who detailed the fallaciousness of putting the questioner, but not the argument, under scrutiny. Although I'm guessing he wouldn't have called it ad hominem, as he would have been speaking ancient Greek and not Latin. Now, there are a few different types of ad hominem arguments, and I'll just take you through a few of them. The first one is circumstantial ad hominem or appeal to motive. This is an argument that dismisses a certain stance by questioning the motives of the person who supports it. And here's a few examples from the comment sections of my videos. Wow, trying to get clicks by trying to discredit others with your false information and twisted narrative. You should be ashamed of yourself. What government agency is paying you to spread your disinformation? Or are you getting a backhander from a pro-vaccine group? You should be banned from YouTube. Nothing independent about this person at all. She might as well have a I love Pfizer badge on. Are you on Big Pharma's payroll? As I explain in my video on why people believe misinformation, it would make no sense for Big Pharma to fund someone with less than 4,000 subscribers. It just wouldn't be a good return on investment. Let's have a look at a few more. It seems like you have a bias. Australian Centre for Nanomedicine Seed Funding 2016, Australian Centre for Nanomedicine Seed Funding 2017. I think this person has seen the word nanomedicine and assumed the grants have something to do with nanoparticles used in mRNA vaccines. They don't. The first grant was looking at applications for cancer treatment and the second was looking at antimicrobial applications. Neither had anything to do with mRNA vaccines. And here's one from Twitter from somebody called Vaccine Mole. Professor Fenton, Dr. Susan Oliver is affiliated with University of South Wales, funded by greatest investor in mRNA vaccines known as Bill Gates. I'm tired of warning this. When you see any doctor promoting the shots, follow the money. Now, they obviously meant to say University of New South Wales and not South Wales, but what is even funnier is the evidence they provide for the funding is a grant given to the University of Sydney. And it's pretty stupid to think that everyone affiliated with the university is going to start spreading information favourable to Bill Gates just because he gave a small grant to someone at the university. Now, the next ad hominem fallacy is the association fallacy that occurs when someone's argument is dismissed based on their supposed connection to something that is unrelated to the discussion at hand. An example would be Pol Pot failed his exams and was evil. You failed your last exam, so you are evil too. You may have heard of Godwin's Law, which is an internet adage asserting that as an online discussion grows longer, the probability of a comparison to Nazis or Adolf Hitler approaches one. Typically, the person likens their opponent to Hitler, saying something along the lines, 
that Hitler also thought that. When this happens, generally, the association fallacy is at play. Now, I don't see a lot of Hitler and Nazi comments on my videos, and the ones that I have seen, I won't be sharing, but I have seen other examples of the association fallacy, and here's one example. My doctor recommends I smoke camels. Trust the science. The implication here is because some doctors once recommended camel cigarettes. We can't trust any science. The next type of ad hominem fallacy is tone policing, which is an attack that focuses on the manner in which someone makes an argument rather than on the argument itself. And it just so happens that I have a few examples of this. Thanks for the head bobbing sarcasm and your condescending manner. That tactic is so yesterday. Can't hid the truth behind the drama. We don't need any more lying. Why do your hands wave like you are juggling with invisible balls? Wacky, waving, inflatable, arm flailing tube lady. This is like a masterclass in arrogance and self indulgence smiling. Passive aggression from a strange woman with arm mannerisms of a Thunderbird puppet. The hand movement, non-stop smile. Never seen anyone look so much like a puppet on a string. Try to act normal. Now, it is true that I wave my hands around when I'm speaking. I even do it when I'm speaking on the phone. But it doesn't make what I am saying any less valid. Tone policing overlaps quite a bit with what is certainly the most common form of ad hominem fallacy that I see in the comments on my videos, and that is the abusive ad hominem. The abusive ad hominem fallacy is a logical fallacy that occurs when an argument attacks the person in a direct and abusive manner instead of addressing the point that they are trying to make. And here's just a few examples. Wow, you're a trip. The clothes, the eyes. Not sure why, but that smile this lady displays seems a bit off. You are ghastly. Go away. This woman is so annoying. Is she evil or just stupid? You sound bonkers, unhinged and passive aggressive. Jesus Christ, that face is the embodiment of snide, the stuff of nightmares, smiley, smiley, smiley face or whatever type of face that is. You have it, the clown level, creepy energy. Excuse me while I bleach my eyes. Damn, baby, you're throwing up all kinds of red flags. I feel like there is a skin suit hanging up just off camera. Hideous witch-looking creature attacking a real scientist. What a sweet little liar this gnarly-voiced lady is. People do your due. Visit John's channel. Use science to fix your face and teeth. Wow, you have a very large nose. And finally, this one by Cindy. Lady, you are nuts. And just to be clear, this was not from my Cindy. She's a very sweet little dog, bit, been a bit camera shy at the moment, but she's never nasty to anyone. That was just a small selection of the abusive ad hominems that I have got. Now, if you have left an abusive comment and it hasn't been featured, don't feel bad. It doesn't mean you weren't insulting enough. There were just too many comments to include them all. But there is one more category that I'm going to cover, so you might still get a mention. The final category is the ad feminum fallacy. This is like an abusive ad hominem, except the insult is based on the fact that the person being targeted is a woman. You have been bought and sold and should basically have stayed home cooking and cleaning for which you were born for rather than pretending to be something you're obviously not qualified to be. No wedding ring. Hmm, interesting. 
old, unmarried, no kids, sad. I'm assuming you're unmarried with lots of cats. Now, obviously I'm a dog person, but there does seem to be a lot of people who think being unmarried is an insult. And finally, this one. I have to agree. She has this definite feminist, women are underpaid, we will be listened to sort of undertone vibe emitting from her. I've come across many of them through the years. Okay, so that's the ad hominem fallacy. But I would also like to cover what is not an ad hominem fallacy. And I'll do this by way of an example. These comments were left on a video that I did about some new peer-reviewed papers on the origins of COVID. I just watched an hour-long video from Dr. Richard M. Fleming, who spoke under oath, someone a hundred times more qualified than you to discuss this subject, a man with obvious scruples and integrity, a brilliant man in his field. What are you, Dr. Oliver? Cardiologist, nuclear cardiologist, certified in positron emission tomography, PET, jurisprudence, doctor of law, researcher, inventor, author. I replied with the following. You left out convicted criminal from your list of his qualifications. I am curious, though, which one of the things that you have listed do you think is remotely relevant to understanding the origins of a virus? Now, this is not an example of an ad hominem fallacy because a commenter was claiming Dr. Fleming had scruples and integrity as well as relevant expertise. So I was providing evidence to rebut this and he is a convicted criminal. However, if they hadn't presented false information about his integrity and had actually presented his argument and I just said this, it would be ad hominem because I wouldn't have been addressing their points. Likewise, if you respond to an argument with you're an idiot, it's an example of the ad hominem fallacy. But if you say you're an idiot because and then explain why their argument is wrong, it is not an example of the ad hominem fallacy. And of course, pointing out that other people are spreading misinformation and explaining why this misinformation is not ad hominem either, just in case somebody brings it up. Now, finally, I'd like to preempt something that I am expecting somebody to bring up in the comments. Calling someone an anti-vaxxer is not an example of ad hominem. It is a descriptive term that describes people who spread misinformation about vaccines. And that includes spreading misinformation exclusively about COVID vaccines. This person here, for instance, who doesn't like being called an anti-vaxxer, suggested an alternative would be anti-untested experimental gene therapy. This is, of course, misinformation because COVID vaccines aren't untested experimental gene therapy. So this person meets a definition of an anti-vaxxer. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And if you've actually left a nice comment as opposed to a nasty comment, triple thank you. Much as I find it amusing to read all the insulting comments from people who can't come up with valid arguments, it is much more enjoyable to read nice comments. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate your support. I will be making more videos in the future looking at logical fallacies. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.